Born in Halifax, but raised in the Ottawa Valley, Ian Donald Miller was introduced to horses at a young age, and it seemed that the love affair was instantaneous. At age 10, the Millers moved to Edmonton, and horse-crazy Ian went to Mrs. Gardner's School of Riding. Louise Gardner and Dr. Otto Bode would be Ian's first teachers. Five years later, it was back to Ottawa, where he found the stable of Nancy Woods and joined the Ottawa Valley Hunt Club's chapter of the Pony Club, under the guidance of Colonel Arthur McKibben. By age 15, the education of a lifetime had begun. He came out of really nowhere and came to the shows down in uh, southern Ontario, where we are, and uh, <laughs> did very well. Ian quickly became the scourge of the Ottawa Valley, and along with another equally impressive teenager named Terence Miller, they set their sights on the big time. He had a horse called uh, War Machine that uh, was a local, I and mean, he was national champion at the Royal Winter Fair with the horse. Two guys that really uh, enjoyed the sport and liked it, so we used to uh, uh, hang out. We used to discuss horses a lot, uh, most of the time at the Chamberlain Hotel over in uh, Ail Aylmer. Ian remembers it well. <clears throat> Uh, he, he was a big fan of the entertainment. Huey Scott was his name, and uh, you know, to this day, he likes to sing a few uh, lines from Crying Time Again. He'll do it tonight if you ask him. In 1972, at age 25, Ian Miller went to his first Olympic Games aboard Schumann. Canada would finish a very respectable sixth in the team competition. But Ian's debut was not the stuff of legend. We got to the horse show, the riders, we were there, and Ian looked for his boots, didn't have, he didn't have them, and his groom with the tack box, he asked where the, his boots were, and he said, I thought you had them. At this stage, we're just about going insane. About 10 minutes before he was due to go in, John arrived with his boots. He'd gone back to the barn and picked them up. And, you know, we weren't up in the carpet for no boots, and Ian was able to ride. Just about that time, legendary U.S. equestrian George Morris was hired to run a local stable in the Ottawa area for Coors beer heiress Jackie Morald. The stable needed a rider an unbelievable opportunity for Ian right in his own backyard. I was down at the barn in the, in the tack room, George phoned, and if I knew anybody that was, uh, you know, capable of riding the horses, you know, both hunters and jumpers. And I just said, well, I said, you know what, there's a guy right down the road there that, uh, that rides, and his name is uh, Ian Miller. Oh, he said, Gee, you know, he's all arms and legs. I, I, geez, I, I, I think, you're, are you kidding me? He's 25, he's set in his ways, he has old habits. Listen, Ian wants it so bad, George, he'll do anything you say. I, it's too late for me to change him. I can't change him because I'm a stickler on position and style, and uh, that's the basis of my philosophy of riding and jumping. He's really, really a dedicated rider. And I think, you know what, he'll stand you in really good stead. Well, oh, I don't think he can ride hunters. I said, he'll do what anything you say. Eventually I gave in. And I said, uh, all right, Jimmy Elder, I'll give you in a chance. Ian came on the scene as the rider and I was the manager and ran the farm pretty much. If I can make this guy the way I want to make him, we have to put him on hunters. He wanted to ride the hunters, and he wanted to learn how to ride a hunter. And can you imagine the thrill, him asking me how to ride a hunter? And we had a horse called Jet Flight, and I took him across the street and taught him a lesson and gave him a lesson on how to ride a hunter and how to go the forward seat and how to get up under the saddle and go with your horse. And I can't tell you what a thrill the whole thing was. You know, he adapted to it so readily because he's such, such an amazing talent. And probably that season and the season after, we went to Florida and we conquered that whole hunter world. Dwyer Hill Farms became the keystone for everything to follow. And at age 25, it would be an understatement to say Ian was just getting started. 
already married to local girl Lynn Duran. The Millers bought a beautiful piece of property southwest of Ottawa in Perth, Ontario. Millerbrook Farms would be the foundation for a couple that just loved horses. They could talk about things literally all night, uh, talk about issues or problems or how to solve things or what to do. She was, I think, the um, driving force behind he and he, she, he was, she was not only a wife, she was a companion and a coach. In 1979, Ian took a horse named Brother Sam to the Pan Am Games in San Juan. They would return with his first international hardware, Team Silver and individual bronze. One year later, Ian and Brother Sam would be part of one of Canada's greatest equestrian achievements, the gold medal in Rotterdam at the alternate Olympics, beating every great nation in the world, including the Olympic champions. The Euro Europeans used to kid us and mimic it when we uh, walked the distances. Ian is very, very good at walking the courses and, and picking the routes and figuring what you have to do. It was kind of a, a good thrill to win that and it was just as tough as any Olympics. As the 80s started to unfold, all was right with the world. Ian was a fixture on the team. Millerbrook was flourishing and the Millers' two young children, Jonathan and Amy, were growing up immersed in the world of horses. We traveled around Canada and lived in our camper, uh, the whole family, and went to horse shows all over the place. And Jonathan and I had friends that traveled around to the horse shows with us and also lived in their campers. And there was a whole wonderful horse community in North America, uh, a bunch of families, and it was a great way to grow up. It really seemed normal at that point uh, that you go to a show and, and uh, you know, you're first and second or first, second and third in the Grand Prix and, you know, you grow up just thinking that's normal. I remember the first time I jumped because it was in a western saddle <laughs> and my mom was away <laughs> and my dad's like, why don't you try jumping? And I was so excited. Amy's excitement was a forebear of things to come, but for now, there were horses to ride and trophies to win. It was now September of 1983, and naturally, everybody was in Calgary, including Ian Miller and Dutch rider and agent Emil Hendricks. Emil and, uh, and Ian were both at Spruce Meadows that year in September, so I guess that would have been in 83. And uh, Emil said, I know you come to Europe, um, you know, from time to time. If you ever get a little bit of time, you should come by. And so Ian was in Europe, I guess, in the fall of, of 83 and uh, he had a day or two, uh, you know, uh, left over and so he called Emil up and, and Emil said, uh, yeah, I, I know of a horse, um, a big chestnut. Big Ben was young and he was huge and he wasn't the most handsome horse you've ever seen in your life, but the connection between Ian and Ben was immediate. Ian's instincts were right on and by the spring of 1984, Ian and Big Ben were winning, and unbelievably, not 10 months after purchasing him, they were at the Olympics in Los Angeles. A fourth place finish in the team competition was a sign of things to come. He just worked and worked Big Ben, and I remember him jumping <coughs> short combinations to make him athletic and back and forth, and he just spent all those hours and developed him. And, he had faith and developed him. By 1985, Ian and Ben were a real team, and Spruce Meadows, now 10 years old, was coming into its own as the mecca of show jumping in North America. Looking back, the confluence of these equestrian icons was in a word, kismet. Ian Miller came with Big Ben and, and his string of horses and got the crowd excited, got people uh, interested in the sport that had no knowledge of the sport in the past. And that, uh, that teamwork and that passion that uh, was evocative in the ring really created um, what Spruce Meadows is today. And it's fantastic to watch over the years and see how you know, that venue has grown to become the best, uh, the best, best facility in the world. The television got to be so big and it, it just it made for a perfect fit to uh, have a Canadian hero like Ian Miller with his wonder horse Big Ben. The national coverage, it just, it made for magical TV for sure. 
In 1987, Ian and Ben really started to roll. Individual and team gold at the Pan Am Games. And from there, it was straight to Spruce Meadows for the world's richest Grand Prix, the Du Maurier International. The success of Ben and Spruce opened doors that business-savvy Ian barged right through. And so it was when the Bank of Montreal came calling. Bill Mulholland's grand plan that he wanted to brand the bank with excellence. And um, then Ian was part of the, the, the centerpiece, if you will, in terms of his involvement, even then with Big Ben. He was very dignified. Uh, he was smart, and he won. We're enormously proud. Um, of his sense of responsibility to Canada. Uh, he's a Canadian first and foremost. Um, obviously, he would have had opportunities to ride anywhere he liked in the world, and yet he stayed here. The bank got him and hung on to him. The spring of 1988 saw the World Cup Finals return to Gutenberg, Sweden, where Ian and Ben had finished second two years prior. This time, there would be none of that. World Cup champions would cap a dizzying six months that had the combination on top of the world. We all had tears and goose pimples when the national anthem was played and our big Ben was, had won. And many of us were there. And so the excitement and the emotion was intense. Here it is. And Ian Miller has done it. Ian Miller and Big Ben. Ian didn't only win the World Cup, he won all three classes, the speed, the double jump off, and the individual. He won all three of them. And as Bert Nimmeth, he said, he said, that's how all riders you know, should ride, and that's how all horses should go. The first equestrian combination to win back-to-back -back World Cup titles, Ian and Big Ben dominated the year. A third win at the Spruce Meadows Derby, winners at the Grand Prix of Bordeaux, and the Grand Prix of Stuttgart, stamped Ian as the number one ranked rider in the world. Ian and Big Ben would survive the roller coaster of life to compete for five more years. Two bouts of colic and a horrific crash did not stop them as they continued to win everywhere they went. When Ian decided that it was time for Big Ben to stop, the 1994 retirement tour was the stuff of legend. When you see him and when you revisit that video and you know he's got the tear in his eye and you know he's a he is a fierce, fierce competitor. He doesn't show his emotions very much. So, you know, when, when you see that um, of him, I think that, that tells you all you needed to know. At 49 years of age, Ian Miller's list of accomplishments had already put him in the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame and earned him the prestigious Order of Canada. Many of his contemporaries had moved on from competition. It would have been easy to ride off into the sunset, but this was Captain Canada, and he figured he still had, oh, about 200 Nations Cup teams still to lead. Replacing Big Ben was impossible, but a string of very nice horses, play it again, Dorincord and Promise Me put the ageless Miller in the next three Olympic Games. A fourth horse named Ivar took Ian to individual gold at the 1999 Pan Am Games. But more importantly, it had allowed him to impart his wealth of knowledge on a whole new generation of international riders. I would say he was a very tough taskmaster. He made it very clear from the outset what his expectations were um, as from you as a team rider. He expected you to be prepared. He expected there to be no excuses. He wanted your best performance. He, you know, he made it very clear that the standard was set very high, that we were representing our country, and he took that very personally. He always says we're going to win, and uh, <laughs> he just refuses to think that perhaps we're going to lose. So when you're a young kid and you're on the team with him, and he, he sort of lets you know that you better be ready because uh, we're not here to joke around. It's pretty intimidating. By the turn of the century, Jonathan and Amy were all grown up and a big part of the family business. 
They were teaching and training, and yes, even competing against their now legendary father. He said one time, you know, I, I can let you win this. And I said flat out no, and then that was that. And so from that day forward, there was no, I knew that I'd chosen never <laughs> to let, you know what I mean? That he was gonna let me beat him. And I knew every time after that, I was gonna have to fight tooth and nail to get it. And he knew that that's what I wanted. You just gotta watch Ian when the kids are riding. You know, ride every jump with them, talk to them when they walk the course and come out and talk to them before they go in the ring, you know. I think it's a thrill to him every time the kids go in the ring. By 2004, Canada had gone four years without winning a Nations Cup. When 57-year-old Ian Miller led the next generation into Wellington, Florida. Needing a clean ride, Ian brought it home for the win that would trigger an explosion of international success. Two years later, riding at his beloved Spruce Meadows, Ian and Canada would end another drought. For a Canadian, uh, other than say Olympics or something, it's, it's, it has to be to ride on a, a team there is such a great honor. But to ride on a team and win there is as big a goal as we can have. Yay! Oh, imagine! 31 years! 31 years it took us! Yeah! <laughs> Everybody was cheering for us. The stands were cheering for us, and to be a part of that for Ian, hopefully it happens again, but to be a part of it for the first time, there's no words to describe it. Ian's mount for that incredible win was a Holsteiner gelding named In Style. Owned by Sue Grange, In Style was a horse of great promise and gave Ian hope that he could compete in the Olympics one more time. At age 59, he had no thoughts of retiring. He was just having too much fun. Great sense of humor. He's a really funny guy. Ian has a really good sense of humor, so he always can make a, a situation that maybe feels a little tense, a little less tense. We are sitting out at a little table by the pool. And I think it's Torchy and Ian and I, and this couple walks up and says, so we had our Pan Am jackets on, and they said, oh, so you gentlemen are here for the Pan Am games. And Ian puffs up, you know, like only oh, Ian can do it. He goes, yeah, we're here for the Pan Am. And they go, and so what sport do your children ride in? Well, you should have seen. <laughs> a Nations Cup win in Florida, a team silver at the Pan Am Games in Rio, and a Canadian championship at the Royal had in style at the top of his game. When the announcement was made in the spring of 2008 that Ian Miller would represent Canada in his record-tying ninth Olympic Games at the age of 61. However, that very same spring, Ian lost the love of his life. His wife, Lynn, died of cancer. Best friends, I would say. Business partners, best friends. They knew each other so well that uh, they kept each other in check. You know, it's that, that whole thing that everyone aspires to be. They made each other better. Canada had high hopes heading into Hong Kong, a roster full of talent, great riders, the best horses we had ever assembled. And Ian. Nobody else had Ian. I've never seen anyone any braver in the saddle than Ian Miller. He would do things or try things that everybody else would maybe be quite hesitant to try and he would try it and if they worked they worked if they didn't work well he'd pick himself up and go again but they, but he's a very brave man in the saddle every great athlete has to deal with it no matter how much you accomplish there always seems to be one thing missing and that is all anybody wants to talk about so wouldn't you know it captain canada got his chance to exercise all those olympic demons riding for his teammates for his kids for Lynn, who had helped him every step of the way, and for Canadian sports fans everywhere who had cheered him on for more than 40 years. 
all he had to do was go clean one more time. When he went in there, he just he just mastered that course. Beth, the pressure is insurmountable. <laughs> I agree, Nancy, and this is not a position that Ian is unfamiliar with. He has ridden Canada's anchored position for many, many years, but it's never mattered more than it does right now. He sliced it apart like a piece of bread. He knew exactly what he was doing and didn't waver at all. Nancy, if this horse has made a little mistake all week, it's been a little weakness at the oxers, and I'm sure that Ian is very aware of the help he's going to need to give this horse at this double of oxers coming up. Pressure. Does it. And Canada's Ian Miller does it once again. He's done it before, a clean round. He's under the time allowed. Canada's Ian Miller. I thought it was the best ride I've ever seen, ever seen him have. Probably one of the happiest moments that I, I've seen him. All of Canada rode with him that day, but he is used to that. The ultimate anchor man delivered under the ultimate pressure. There is no greater satisfaction than that. It was amazing the people that would come up to him, uh, other riders, other trainers, people from other countries, and they're like, I, you know, I've been wanting this for you for so long. You know, I respect you as a rider so much, and I'm so pleased that you finally got this because you deserve this. The Olympic medal was an exclamation point on a career full of memories and accomplishments for a man who is the ultimate horseman. He's taught us consistency. He's taught us uh, tradition. He's taught, he's taught us integrity. I think he's taught us innovation. There's a well-known phrase that Ian used a lot, water against stone. No, that's the best way you can look at training a horse. You can't go out and have a couple of big schooling sessions and change something. You have to chip away day by day, and Ian's a master at that, of just looking for incremental little changes in a horse over time add up to big changes. You know what you're getting into as an athlete. The horse doesn't. So you have to prepare for that, and this preparation is very, very important in, in, in uh, his success. It leads to his success. And, he, he, as you can see, Ian does it so damn well. As the sport evolves, Ian Miller evolves. Uh, as the sport gets tougher, he gets tougher. As it gets faster, he gets faster. Being smooth and consistent is the way to be the fastest in the jump off, for instance, or to make a time allowed. He's brilliant, and I think he could teach any rider how you don't have to hurry to make the time allowed. You have to ride smart and smooth, and you can make a tough time allowed. He put the horses to take off. He make, with his balance in the air and everything, he make the angle to, 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 to land it. And in this way, the next distance, when he landing, he already have the distance done. And for this, you say, oh, it's easy for him. It's easy for him, no. He shaped every parabola of the horse in every fence of the course. It's incredible. At age 65, Ian broke the record for Olympic Games appearances at London this past summer. More noteworthy was his ninth place finish in the individual, the best by any North American rider and his best at an Olympic Games. He was as good a rider as any rider there, and he was 65. If you just forget about his age, he was as good a rider as anybody in the Olympics. You go from show to show and your adrenaline's there and you're trying to be better and you're always thinking about what you're going to do next and th there's not much relaxation time. So um, for him to still feel happy going that strong is truly amazing because um, I think by the time I get to be as mature as him I'll probably retire. <laughs> I always, he has like exactly my age and Ian, I want to be like Ian. He looked like my son. <laughs> this is something incredible. I, I, every time I look in here, I start to have pain in all my body. While his age is always a topic of conversation, what it really speaks to is that Ian Donald Miller just loves to do what he does. 
perhaps more than anybody ever has. This guy still loves doing this. Like, he just loves this. He makes our sport look relatively easy, and it isn't. It's like a kid in a candy store. He just absolutely loves it. His size, his control, his balance, his hands. He's got a different mentality than anybody that I know. He's more driven to win. His dedication to his sports is like nobody else's you've ever seen. I mean, if we could only be half that good, we'd be getting places. It's the passion for the horses and the competition. You know, he, there's always in the, the, the hope that there's the next Big Ben right around the corner. And he's such an asset to our country and such a, a remarkable person and a rider. He's truly, truly one of the greats of all time.